I've built two temporary beams with legs under them to hold up a temporary floor. You can see the last joist pocket from there over to that corner will be open all the way to the ceiling, but yet I need to be able to set this D wall logs on up to the top plate. So I have built, well actually two, I've got one of them up, uh, temporary floor beams. These were some timbers that I had uh, down at the log yard. And uh, I put some braces on there and made up kind of a, a T post on either end. And when I get ready to put the floor in, all I have to do is just scoot these back and set them on top of uh, a rough sawn two by eight that I have on the floor that extends across three of the floor joists underneath the cabin. So it'll be supported all the way across. Yeah, I've got the first joist up here on the horses and I'm strapped onto it and I'm about to put it up on the wall in the pockets. And I, hopefully I can do this by myself because they have to drop exactly straight down into the pockets because the pockets are cut really, really snug. And I may have to take a little sledgehammer and, and uh, give them a little help with a tap or two. got the last joist on the hoist. I'm going to spin it around and just have to set it down on top of the wall and just slide it over and set it down in the pocket. I can't back the hoist up far enough to set that last one because the bottom of the hoist would hit the, the wall. So I'll just set it down there and set that one in the pocket by hand. Getting ready to uh, put a temporary floor up here over these joists so that I can set my hoist up that I'm working on and pick up the rest of the logs and the rafters. I'm putting a temporary ledger up here to hold the edge or the ends of the boards over here on B wall. And as you can see, I've got the little spacers up there to where the ledger's not actually touching the log itself and that will let water, rainwater go behind that and catch. And when I put the flooring on, I won't actually screw it to that ledger. I'll let that float until I get B-wall pulled into control on both ends of it. I will take this down when I put the, the other flooring that I'll make, which will be tongue and groove V-edge. But I'm getting ready to put the rough sawn boards up there. I went to the mill yesterday and they uh, they got my two by sixes sawed that I'll use. Since it is a temporary floor, I'll take these off and I'll be able to use them for other projects. This lumber will not go to waste. I'm holding the ledger and the flooring back six inches from the end there so that I can drop a plumb bob and keep my walls running true and plumb and staying with the 
the benchmark that I have down here on the floor, the string, and that way from the, from the bottom all the way to the top, I'll have it square and plumb. What I'm doing is just cutting one end square, and I'm just letting the other end kind of run wild. It, uh, it doesn't have to be cut off. I may trim it back because I've got to have a way to get up there on the second floor. So I probably will have to cut me a hole or just trim the whole length of it off where I can get up and down. Some of these have some pretty good knots in it. So I've kind of got to watch that. I don't want to. I don't want them to break on me. But I've got enough boards up there now. I can get up there and pull them up and lay them down, lay each one of them down, and put some screws in it to hold it there. I'll have a shade before dark. <laughs> floor down it's been a hot humid afternoon but I got it down but I've got a board here to kind of bump against with the hoist I don't want to roll the hoist off here for sure if it happens to want to roll too far that will stop it but I want to come up about two feet on the this little wall here up above the flooring and the hoist that I've built I'll be able to use it up here and use it hopefully to set the rafters with when I get them get to that point so hang on, we still got more work to do.